Hi, I'm Pete Bauman with South Dakota State University. I'm the range field specialist out of Watertown, South Dakota. With me today is Jeff Hemingway with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. We invited Jeff here today to run the rainfall simulator, give us an opportunity to, to understand a little bit more about soil health here in South Dakota, water infiltration, and how that impacts rangeland and cropland uh, management. Well, we've had the, the rainfall simulator in, in South Dakota for about eight, nine years, something like that now. Is This is not something that we invented. It's actually the University of Nebraska. Dr. Uh, Paul Yassa, the uh, ag engineer down there, actually came up with a rainfall simulator, I believe, uh, 1992. So it's, it's not something that's really new. The whole idea behind the rainfall simulator is, is to put a couple inches of rain on and actually look at the effects of management within a few minutes. And that's the cool thing about, uh, about the rainfall simulator. The nozzle we have up here, it's an oscillating application to simulate that raindrop size that we actually have from a rainstorm. That raindrop hits the soil surface, it either infiltrates, in other words, that infiltration is it moves into the soil, moves through the, the soil profile, or it hits the soil surface and it runs off. Within the rainfall simulator, if it hits the soil surface and runs off, you can see that there's a funnel in front of each one of these treatments. That runoff will actually then end up in this front set of jars if it actually infiltrates. In other words, that water moves through the soil profile, there's actually a catchment pan that's up, actually up underneath here. And you can see that, that this second jar that's in the back of the rainfall simulator will actually catch any of that water that that's actually moves through that, that soil profile okay. and then um, is then deposited in that jar. So basically in, in each of these cases we have, uh, for each, each individual treatment, we've got a infiltrated water, runoff water, Again, infiltrated water, runoff water for each one of these. There's a number of things that we're gonna actually try to show within the rainfall simulator. And one of those is, is uh, um, raindrop impact and, and splash associated with, with the erosion process. And that's really called the process of detachment. When that kinetic energy hits the soil surface, that detachment process occurs, that soil is then splashed up. And the nice part about the, the backboard here is we can actually visually see that very easily, that soil splash, see that, that soil actually being deposited on the back here during the operation of the, of the rainfall simulator. Raindrop impact here is depicted, well, of course, blown up many times. And you can actually see that a lot of kinetic energy hitting that soil surface, basically that, that wetted surface, um, showing a really good depiction of that, that soil splash or that detachment of those soil particles. After it goes through that detachment process, it's, it's, it's bounced up in the air. Um, that very quickly goes into this transport mode. In other words, that, that sediment is being transported off that site. It may be local deposition or, or uh, uh, within that field or maybe off-site completely. But that whole process of detachment and or transport is basically that erosion process. That's that water erosion process in a nutshell. But once you've got canopy or crown, is splash still an important factor in, well, in, in midsummer and that, storms? And that's a really good question because at, at some point we go from the, the, the really intense energy associated with that, that uh, raindrop impact uh, to, well, it could hit the soil surface depending on the, the density of the canopy or it may hit the canopy and then actually fall off the canopy to the soil surface and that still can cause erosion depending on that soil surface. Okay. So the amount of, of uh, uh, rainfall that we actually have and that fall height Sure. that we actually have from the canopy can still have an, an effect on, on uh, erosion within that field. Okay, now that we've turned the rainfall simulator out off, uh, let's look at some of the results, uh, well, as associated with each one of these. And if you remember right, we were talking about this is a conventionally tilled soil. Um, again, the corn bean rotation, uh, uh, fall and spring tillage. But you can see how, how uh, well, how flat that soil surface looks. Uh, it really doesn't have much for, for aggregate stability and that's really leveled out. You can really see that. But really the, the, the crux of what we wanted to see here is how much runoff actually occurred. And you can see there's a great deal of runoff here. I don't know if you can really see that in the back. I can actually pull this off and look at it. But there's, there's little to none as far as that infiltrated water uh, associated with this one. But the other thing that, that we really want to pick up on in this particular situ uh, situation is that how dark um, that... Uh, runoff water is and, and of course that what we're talking about there as far as that color is that's that sediment and, and, and the associated organic matter um, we're losing that that best component of our soils that's being eroded away um, and, and associated with it too in, in all our agricultural fields we're putting on um, uh, agricultural uh, 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 products that is either fertilizer or pesticides and that's attached to that soil particle um, moving off site into our lakes, rivers, and streams too. And, and again, so it's not just the sediment as, as a pollution 
uh, source, but the associated uh, uh, fertilizer or, or pesticides uh, on that particular soil um, as it's being eroded away. Um, the, the cool thing for me though is, is as we look at this next set of two trays in, in comparison, uh, again we've got this no-till soil. Again you can see a substantial amount of, of runoff has occurred on our no-till soil. Actually we have quite a bit of, of infiltration. But again the difference between these two, same soil, no-till soil, but we've removed that residue here. We've left that residue on that soil surface. You can visually see how much difference that makes in the amount of runoff that actually occurs on that particular site. Substantial difference. Um, and of course what we're also looking at is that, that just that opposite comparison of, of the infiltrated water. In other words, uh, if that water doesn't run off, it, it infiltrates basically is what we're actually saying in this particular case or vice versa. If it runs off, it doesn't infiltrate. And you can actually see that between these two uh, of samples, uh, jars, that, that is here we have an, end up with a lot of runoff, very little infiltration. Um, our no-till soil without the residue. With the residue, we have uh, a lot less runoff and a lot more that's infiltrated. Really kind of a cool demonstration. When we really start talking about that, that uh, um, infiltrated water makes a substantial difference in our, uh, in our soils. Um, you know, when we, really, we start really looking at this, this whole uh, issue of uh, solelolistic uh, ethanol, we're talking about removing residues, etc. Would that make a major difference in, uh, in our production systems? I think we can actually see that removing all that residue would make a, a major uh, difference. Um, really kind of a cool demonstration uh, part of this, this uh, rainfall simulation. Um, the other thing that we wanted to, of course, look at was the rangeland component associated here. And again, we have this, this uh, uh, full season use. In other words, really something that, that we have as far as a range site that was uh, uh, really overused in the spring. We have a compacted uh, soil profile. We can see that we have a substantial amount of runoff. We have quite a bit of infiltration, uh, a little bit more than what I would have suspected in this particular case. But again, compared to our, our uh, native uh, uh, component, uh, in other words, our more diverse uh, rangeland community, um, a lot more, or a lot, excuse me, a lot less uh, a runoff. But what I really wanted to point out was the quality of runoff also. When you start looking at that on that rain site that's really been well taken care of, uh, there's, there's absolutely no comparison to that, to this conventionally tilled or, or uh, scenario where we end up with all that sediment coming off. Those, those uh, rain sites where we end up with, with uh, uh, having that surface protected, having really good aggregate stability over a long period of time, within our rangelands make a substantial difference um, in the amount of, of uh, runoff, but also that quality of runoff uh, that we actually see. In other words, we don't end up with that soil being removed from that site, period. Um, one of the things we really like to do is flip these over and, and visually look at that. And, and uh, I'd, I'd like to, to do that on a couple of scenarios. But first of all, well, let's, let's uh, look at the uh, uh, no-till scenario we have here. Let's look at that soil structure. I can turn that over right here. And you can see about what we would have depicted here is that we have this really good soil structure, really uh, um, um, wet all the way through, of course. We had quite a bit of, of uh, infiltrated water. Let's look at that that we have here. Substantial amount of infiltrated water. Um, and then we want to compare that to, uh, well, our conventionally tilled where we ended up with with having very little of that infiltrate, let's, let's look at what that looks like. And of course, we have a, a two inch, two and a quarter inch flat here. Um, and we had very little, in fact, almost nothing actually infiltrate through and of course you have a, a, a dry soil profile on the bottom. What I, what I find is really interesting though, this is, these are, these are uh, loamy sites, um, uh, loam within, within the, the, this range of organic matter should actually have a water holding capacity of about two inches per foot. Uh, we put a little bit more of that on the, the, today. And in other words, for all certainty, we should be actually moving that water through that profile. Um, but we're not in this conventionally tilled uh, scenario because of why well, that, that poor aggregate stability has sealed that soil surface up to the point where we're not moving that water down through that soil profile. It's not infiltrating through. Um, and of course, it's, it's running off. And, and you can see that by looking at the infiltrated uh, water that we have, which is frankly none, and the large amount of, of uh, runoff that we actually have. 
as compared to the no-till site where we ended up with substantially less of that actually being moved into the runoff component of, of the sample. So it's a really cool demonstration from the standpoint of, of really talking about uh, water movement through soil profiles. We need to talk, start talking about that with producers more um, and at, at some point uh, getting the message across to the producers that, that doing more tillage is not increasing infiltration rates, it's decreasing infiltration um, and we need to, to actually, well, capture more of that, that water in our soil systems um, in the future. Being more productive, um, I think that, that, and capturing more of those intense rain, rainstorm events. Uh, the first sample we'll actually look at here is, is our, uh, our uh, pore condition range. And we'll see what that looks like on the bottom here. It comes out of the sample. It's about what I expected actually to occur is, is we had um, what it, it looked like we had is quite a bit of, of infiltrated water here and in this particular case you can actually still see there's dry parts on the bottom of the sample which means for all practical purposes we had preferential flow going on within the sample itself in other words it was running around the outside of the pan and really not through the sample like it, it was really meant to um, and again that lets, that's, that's one of those scenarios the other thing that I, I think is really kind of crucial and you can see that to a certain extent right here is that within the sample itself you can see that that it actually has that that compacted or fairly platy structure associated within the sample that's something that that you don't you know when, when, you're, when you're pulling out the sample or even digging a soil sample um, you can you can see this visually and you can you can just know that this is going to cause some problems with production it's going to cause some problems with that water relationship and uh, it's it's going to be a, a, a substantial impact on that on the on that particular site. So, uh, really good indicator of, of some some maybe poor conditions uh, within that range line profile. Why don't we do this? Is we'll look at the uh, uh, good condition range at the same time and look at that soil structure also. Again, having a lot of infiltrated water there. And I don't know, like I say, if you can really pick this up on the camera, but, but boy, there is a structural difference just really obvious within these two samples. Is again, this is platy, and then we can see that right here, you can see that, that granular structure it really looks like what I'd call that really black cottage cheese kind of that soil structure that, that's, that's really evident to me of, of really good granular structure within that sample. That's really what something that we're actually looking for. And then like I say, as, as that comparison between this sample uh, that platy uh, structure that's very compacted is, is a really good indicator of, of some real problems associated with that site. So I think that these are really good samples from the standpoint of just, just looking at the structure itself um, and then doing a, a, a compare and, and contrast um, between the two sites. And it's moist all the way across. Very moist across the whole sample. Um, again, where you actually see some dry spots in here, we had that preferential flow occurring around the outside of that, that sample. Uh, giving us really some false readings of, of really infiltration. I see what, you know, what obviously looks like better root structure too on the good one. You know, there's just more root. Oh yeah, you've got, you've got uh, root penetration, you've got a lot more fine roots. Uh, you can actually see some of the limitations. You can see some of the roots actually coming through the, the cracks associated with the plates, between the plates, um, within that, that uh, platy structure. Um, really, really obvious to me when you start pulling these samples of those two differences. Again, looking at that granular structure, you can actually see that that looks like that, that uh, what I call like black cottage cheese. It's, it's a really nice um, structure associated with, with uh, uh, plant development and growth. You can see the, the uh, uh, distribution of, of uh, fine roots uh, within the sample as compared to the, the uh, uh, platy structure where we end up with between the plates we'll end up with, with roots actually coming through that, that uh, profile.
For more information on the topics that we've covered here today, visit SDSU Extension at igro.org or visit the South Dakota Natural Resources Conservation Services website.